Okay, in the second series of uh, the 150 installation, um, we have hooked up the heater hoses. So we've got one running on this side of the engine. Of course, it'll be all tucked in when it's done and attached here. Then we have a breather hose, crankshaft breather hose, temporarily laying here. It's gonna point on the exhaust. And then the other heater hose for the heater core inside the airplane runs here. And while we're running hoses, we're gonna run a eighth inch Tigon, and it's gonna kinda go underneath the cover here, so it'll look nice. And then just to the bottle, overflow bottle. Make sure you have a vented bottle, cap vented. You're not actually gonna put fluid in here, but this is just an expansion chamber. We're gonna add the fluid up front here when we get ready. All right, next step. So this engine, our airplane had a harness for the sensors. We marked them earlier in the previous video. So we're gonna unbundle that and put the wires that go to the different sensors, uh, like the gearbox and coolant and stuff like that. We're gonna do that next. All right, so we did a few more things. I just kind of bundled the wires very loosely because everything kind of changes over time, but for the sensors, so we have one splitting off here for the oil temperature. And then we've got the rest of them going up underneath here. It's gonna be a cover on this eventually. Just all lay in there for now. And then we just split it out, one for gearbox temperature, one for coolant temperature, one for the oil pressure that's just tied here for now. We'll see where it's gonna end up. And then there was a um, little gauge in the airplane already. We might as well use it. It's a um, air fuel ratio gauge that shows you the mixture of the engine. Um, and it's a single wire O2 sensor, which those are not very accurate as far as tuning an engine, but they're, they're good for like troubleshooting when you're flying to see what your mixture is. So we just left that wire here and there'll be a, a oxygen sensor in the exhaust and we'll just crimp that to that when we're done. So another step done. Doesn't work out, maybe I'll take that. All right, so now moving on, we got uh, but, some um, brown yeah. wires that were already here. And uh, I looked at them, they seem to be fine. So added a strain relief though for them and then bundled them, strain relieved them again on the engine and then uh, grounded it on the second bolt behind that. So we got a good ground from the firewall to the engine. We're just gonna have to check uh, behind the firewall and get grounding all the way to the battery. All right, next step was to install the pass-through and run some wires through. Step that was done. We did put the harness on the engine. Of course, that normally comes all done for a Viking customer, but just to, so you can see it before it's all but, bottom, buttoned up, we got the, the coils done and then it routes around here and uh, we, we did the, like we showed for the sensors, uh, but that's for your instrumentation, not the engine. And then we have the harness for the engine. We have the, the um, injectors, four of those. Now in the middle here, and this is something to pay attention to, we've got a, a, a cable, a snake running down here. This is why the intake manifold is off now. Um, we have a, we make a groove in the intake manifold so this can run right through the plastic right here. And the nice thing with that is you can now remove and replace the intake manifold without having to undo a whole lot of wires. Um, and you do maybe want to just pull the intake off, which is just a matter of a, some, a few screws, when you install the engine because it's easy to get to the wiring for the starter, which is behind the intake, and, um, and the alternator. It's, it's getting a little crammed on this particular engine because you've got that big intake manifold. But like I said, if you pull couple of nuts and, and some bolts, which you can all get to from this side with an extension and a, and a 12 millimeter, and just pop that plastic intake off, then you can do all your wiring behind here and tie that up and loom it and everything, protect it, uh, and then put the intake manifold back on. So we got that all done, and we've got the cable going temporarily through our pass-through into the airplane. All right, so the next thing we did, we already have some things here as far as fuel feeding up to it. Uh, but then from there, we went over to the engine. 
kind of through the same clamp we put everything else in. And then just a couple of 90s here so we could reverse direction and go into the engine with the quick disconnect right here. All right, next step was since we already had a breaker in this plane for the house power, we just used it. We did have to add another cable to it and a number 10, and we brought it up here together with the other, routed it with the other wiring, and then down through the slot in the intake we talked about, and to the starter. The reason we're gonna power the house battery, <clears throat> or uh, power, directly from the starter terminal is because we're gonna have the batteries in the back on this airplane, and so this big cable, the number six, uh, is already set up to go underneath the airplane, and it's gonna go to the, to the back of the, <clears throat> uh, where the fuel is, um, and the batteries will be in the back, in the hell hole, like, like I call it, underneath. And so instead of running a whole other wire up front and just running this number six, we then piggyback at the starter and go back into the airplane to that uh, breaker. And from that breaker, we're gonna supply the rest of the airplane. We also are faced on this installation with that the alternator, we're not gonna wire it directly to the battery through the starter terminal because <clears throat> we are uh, wanna see how much current um, we're using. So the alternator has to first run through the battery shunt and then it's gonna go back to the battery. So we can measure the draw on the alternator. All right, so we come out of the alternator and we run that to the shunt and then out of the shunt and then back to down through and to that same place as the other wire, down to that fuse, the, the breaker for the cabin. So now all of the alternator current is flowing through the shunt. The two little wires go to the dyno screen and measure that. So we should now be able to have a reading of the amperage flowing from the alternator to the system. All right, another day. Uh, step two of the installation. We've got the manifold put back on after routing all the wires behind it made sure that the little cutout in the manifold behind here is lined up with the wire loom. And uh, tomorrow's another day, and we'll keep going with step three, or video number three.